So why? Why? Why do we do this? Everybody wonders why. Why do we do this? Why, why do you, suffer? Why suffer? Why do you have to go out to the <laughs> desert in the middle of nowhere or a mountain or a forest or a cold Alaskan wilderness and try to get through something when you can just simply relax where you are? Why are you doing this? That's well, the ultimate question. Why, Chad? Well, you said that, you know, you have your couch, you have your cable TV, you have your apartment or whatever. I didn't. <laughs> so I was kind of forced into it in a way. You know, I thought survival was really cool and and to be able to endure the elements and, you know, endure cold or endure extreme heat, um, travel long distances. I thought that was awesome. But uh, I kind of had to start doing that stuff and uh, during, through a financial crisis. Moved, put all my, all of my family stuff, we put all in storage and kind of, we didn't live together for a while and uh, I was on my own and sleep, living out of a vehicle, out of a car, and did that for a few years. And uh, and uh, quickly uh, had to learn uh, how to stay warm at night and <laughs> and all that stuff, and just living on a budget. And also, when I started, when I was doing some traveling jobs, I I had some like modeling jobs I would do out of town. It wasn't like it wasn't like print modeling or anything. It was medical modeling, and. Uh, and so it was not photography, it was actually ultrasound. Anyways, these jobs uh, that I was doing out of town or out of state, uh, they didn't pay for your accommodations, they didn't pay for your travel. Uh, it was like, if you want the job, you got it, but you gotta take care of your expenses. And so, so many times I spent nights at airports, I spent nights out in sleeping outside, I spent nights, uh, spent night in, a few nights in a park in Austin, Texas, under an oak tree. I spent uh, nights on along the Potom Potomac River when I was working in Washington, D.C. Um, I spent a night um, in, uh, in in outside the parking lot of the Dallas airport, um, just on the ground in between some bushes. <laughs> I spent a night in uh, in the bushes in downtown Atlanta. <laughs> Wow, Alana must have been rough. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, nights at airports, like I mentioned, which was the worst. It was better to sleep outside than the airport because the airport was so noisy and you usually couldn't find a place to lay down. You just had to sit or just lay on the tile floor. Man. Um, yeah, things like that. Camping out in the woods in Illinois when I worked in Chicago. Um, I did crazy stuff like that. and. And I looked at it like, well, if I spend the night out here, I'm saving money. I'm like, I don't have to pay a hotel or I don't have to pay a hostel. And so I'm late saving like 25 or 50 bucks a night. And so I looked at it as a way to make money as income, you know, being able to endure discomforts. Man, you've mentioned before, and that's something that stuck on my mind too. When it all comes to that certain point, when you really have nothing, you definitely know you can count on your own self-reliance. That's really something that I always wanted to understand too. It gives you a certain amount of ease in your mind and a courage knowing how self-reliant you can be if you can simply practice the art of survival. Because we've all come from the point of trying different plants trying different areas uh, uh hunting eating certain things it's all experimenting and that's what i see you doing is experimenting with plants experimenting with ideas always experimenting absolutely and you said it like eases your mind and and stuff like yeah it, it um you know because most people will be if they don't have a place to stay at night they'll panic they'll be like oh my god I don't, I don't have a place to stay my, my flight was delayed and uh, you know and, and I had to cancel this you know and I can't I don't have a place to stay you know and, and I've, I've seen people like really freak out and stress out about that or they're like oh damn I don't I don't have I didn't bring food you know it's, it's like you, you can live a while without food it's, you know it's just yeah. a few hours you know, it's all it's around you night. it's just one night you have to deal with uh, not having a place to sleep you know it's, it's not gonna kill you you know and so being able to accept the discomforts and and deal with it. I, I remember one time in, in New York, uh, my flight was delayed. It was canceled. And I had to wait until the next morning to get a flight out. And I, I was like, okay, whatever. I, and I spent the night sitting in the airport. I was literally sitting the whole time. I didn't even try to sleep. 
and I just sat there and I had a bag of whole cocoa beans and I was peeling the cocoa bean, a whole bag of cocoa beans all night. That's all I did all night. <laughs> that's, sat there that's what it takes. Morning. I like what David Goggins says. The same way you do pull-ups and you build up calluses in your hands. It's the way you build calluses in your mind. The more tough, the more hard things you get through, the harder you become. We're supposed to be able to get through stuff. We're supposed to make it to the next day. So there's little attempts here and there, but it's just you going out in the backyard to camp or you going out to a state park to camp. It's all little baby steps. Just make sure when you get out and you respect the nature. Don't leave your trash behind you. Leave no trace. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, um, you know, make the calluses on your mind and making you tougher. Yeah, I, I call it, I, I like to think of it as internal fitness. You know, you have your external fitness where you're in the gym, you're running or whatever, and you're working out and building your, making your body look good or whatever. But the internal fitness, more so than just the heart, you know, and heart and lungs, you know, you could get that from, from working out and, and have good, strong hearts and lungs. But then there's that internal in your mind, like you said, that internal mental fitness that toughens you up and prepares you, which actually becomes the most important thing when you're dealing with survival. Oh! <laughs>